Labs were one of my favorite parts of school. High school to university, I loved labs. I was that person where when I walked into chemistry class in high school and I saw all of the lab equipment out, I would do my own little happy dance. I was always so excited. Hands-on learning and real-world experience are the entire purpose of labs. To get the most out of them, you have to be prepared for them. Today, I'm gonna show you how I prepared for my labs specifically my biology labs in university. I will also leave a link to a checklist of every step that I took so that you can focus on the video and you will have the resources to follow my steps and even add to them if you want to. By the way, I'm Terrell and this is Absolutely Studying. I bootstrapped my way through university while juggling a full-time job and a family. It was tough and now I wanna pay it forward. I want to supply you with all of the resources and support you need to flourish in your academic career. Today, we are talking about biology labs, one of my favorite subjects. I'm going to break down step by step how I prepared for each and every one of my labs. Let me know in the comments what type of labs are your favorite. And while you're down there, pick up my study planner. It's free, it's in the description, and it's going to help you track your study activities for the entire semester. In university, you're gonna find that labs are often class of their own. They are taught in addition to the lecture material and not always in conjunction with. You might learn one thing in lecture and something completely different in lab. You might even find that they are no longer synchronous where lab will go off in a different direction than your lecture does. Often labs have their own work and their own exams and workload that go with them and it can be really stressful to students. They might mirror the lecture material but they don't always directly follow it. So while in class you might be learning about the chordates, in lecture you're talking about the living condition and how they hunt and eat and how they evolved, while in labs you might be learning about their anatomy and how it functions. While the two subjects are related, they don't overlap necessarily, and what you learn in lecture is not always reinforcing what you're learning in lab, and vice versa. Sometimes the way that the information is related is a little bit tertiary, but it's no less important. In order to understand how they live, you have to understand their anatomy and how they function, and that's how the two subjects are married. A lot of times, labs will have their own midterms and finals, and so they're basically treated as a separate class. I definitely treated them as a separate class. So all of the time I spent studying for my lectures, I spent a separate but equally important amount of time studying for my labs. That way when the lab midterms and exams and assignments came up, I was still prepared for them and studying each of them does reinforce the other. But again, they're graded separately, even though you don't get your own letter grade for your lab, often if you fail your lab, you still fail the entire class, even if you got an A in the lecture portion. Before every single lab, I would read through my lab manual before class. I would color code terminology and apply my entire highlighting strategy to my lab manual. I would expand on definitions and explanations, especially if they were vague or I didn't get them on the first time. I would color in and color code diagrams and learn how to reference the landmarks and draw them out myself. This way, when I got into a lab, especially a biology lab where you're doing a lot of dissections, I would easily be able to figure out what I'm looking for and figure out what landmark it's next to. And then I would be able to find it easier when I'm looking for it on the actual specimen compared to the diagram. I would also elaborate on steps that might be vague or even steps that are just to the point. Sometimes they tell you exactly what they want you to do, but they might miss out on something in the way. If they ask you, for example, to locate the pancreas, sometimes I would expand it to actually detail where the pancreas was, for example. Is it next to the duodenum? Is it underneath the stomach? Will I have to move something? Where is it on the diagram? Actually reference it to the landmarks. And that way, when I was 
in the lab, I would be able to follow my directions a little bit better, find it a little bit more easier, and hopefully that would stick with me when I actually wrote my exam and figured out where everything was. Finally, read through the assignment before class. Often there's questions or an assignment at the end of lecture, whether you have to hand it in or not. A lot of times you don't have to hand it in and it's just for your own knowledge, but I would read through it before class. This is really important because it kind of tells you what the actual point of the lecture is. What are you actually looking for? Not just what the lab insinuates that you look for. The lab is having you do a series of steps to make sure you know how to do them. A lot of times the purpose of a lab is to follow a series of steps. Whereas when you actually go through the assignment, they want to make sure that you will be able to find all of these landmarks, not just follow instructions and go through the steps. Reading through the assignment will give you insight into what the takeaways really should be. And you'll know at the beginning of the class what you should be looking for rather than having it creep up on you and surprise you at the end. Finally, try to answer those questions before the lab. That way, when you've done the lab and you review the questions again, you can see if you actually learned anything new or if your impression of the answer was right the first time. Being able to reinforce and shift gears on the information and how you know it is really helpful for cementing and creating mental associations to that information when it comes to be test time and you have to retrieve it. Finally, walk into lab with a goal in mind and not just to complete the lab. Is there something that you want to learn? Is there something you want to improve on? Is there a landmark that you have difficulty locating that you want to be able to get good at this time? Are you not so great at the microscope and you want to practice and actually find a specimen or something on a slide the first time? What is it that you want to achieve in this particular lab class? And how can you ensure that you meet that goal? Also, write down some questions that you want answered. Maybe you want to know why something evolved this way, or perhaps you want help to locate something new. Have questions in mind and ask them, not only of yourself, but of your professor or your TA. Ask them these questions and actually be opening to either learning new information or reinforcing information you already know. Just because you know an answer doesn't mean that you can't ask for further clarification on it. That could be one of the goals that you walk into lab with. Lastly, as soon as you are done preparing for lab, pack everything into a dedicated lab bag. I kept a dedicated lab tote. I kept all of my lab materials in there, including a special pencil I only use for my lab class because my lab classes got a little bit grimy and I didn't necessarily want to have my specimen covered pencil follow me to my lecture classes. So I kept a complete lab bag with my lab coat, my dissection kit and everything there. As soon as you are finished your prep, pack everything into your lab tote, whether it's a day or two days or a week before your lab. That way everything is there. You don't have to scramble or rush. You are prepared for lab. You're ready for it and let's go. Now, as a special bonus, there are some extra things that you should do during your lab. First of all, take detailed notes throughout the lab. Anything you see, smell, hear, anything that you experience, write it down. It's only gonna help you as you study for the lab. Next, take pictures during your lab to reference later. Diagrams are one thing, but pictures, now that we have smartphones at our fingertips, pictures are so useful to be able to picture those landmarks and go back and reference them during study time. When you study for your lab, those pictures are gonna be super important. Point to it, have like a pencil pointing to whatever it is you're referencing in it. And then when you actually go back to make your notes later, print them out and label them or save them in a Word doc and label them. Finally, draw lots of diagrams. Drawing is different than picturing because it's giving you the muscle memory of creating the landmarks in your mind. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a, a super detailed drawing, just draw something and be able to reference it later. Finally, finish every lab assignment, even if you don't have to hand it in. 
This is for you. It's a method of studying and it is super useful. Speaking of study planning, pick up my study planner. It is in the description below and it has more than 20 useful study strategies that you can do over the course of the semester. They work for your labs, they work for your lectures, they are free and they are in the description below. While you are down there, like this video and subscribe to my channel. I put out a new video every Thursday and it is always about study tips, organizational hacks, and homework help to help you through the study struggle. You can also visit my website. I have a ton of useful articles and free resources. And until next time, I hope you have an amazing adventure.